Did you have lower back pain when you're pregnant or did you know someone that's pregnant that had lower back pain? Odds are you probably did. That's because lower back pain in pregnancy is extremely common. And it's also common for that back pain to persist after pregnancy. So what do we do about it? Yesterday I presented the case of a 35 year old woman that came to my office with lower back pain that started during her first pregnancy. The pain is almost exclusively in this area right here. It's called the Fortin's finger test and anatomically it's over the PSIS. The PSI what? The PSIS is the posterior superior iliac spine and is a common anatomical landmark in our pelvis. Her pain waxed and waned because it's been 10 years since her first pregnancy, but over the past few years, it's gotten worse. And you know what's also gotten worse is her trust in healthcare professionals. She's been to multiple doctors who all have ordered MRIs of her lumbar spine and told her everything was normal. She's had physical therapy and she even got injections in her lower back that did not provide her relief. And honestly, she started to think that she was crazy and maybe making this up all in her head. Unfortunately, this is not uncommon for me to see this in practice. She'll occasionally get pain that radiates into her groin and sometimes even down her leg with numbness in her feet. Running is out of the question because even going upstairs or getting in and out of a car hurts. Pregnancy-related back pain is extremely common, and the most common culprit is pain in the sacroiliac joint, or the SI joint. In pregnancy, you can also get pain from the lumbar spine or even the pubic symphysis, and this is coined pelvic girdle pain. This is estimated to affect over 50% of women. Here is a diagram showing exactly what the SI joint is. It's where the sacrum connects to the ilium in our pelvis. There's multiple biomechanical reasons why the SI joint is stressed more during pregnancy. That's due to increased weight, changes in our posture, increased intra-abdominal pressure, and ligament laxity during pregnancy. During delivery, the pelvis has to open to allow room for the baby to exit, and that means the SI joints and the pubic symphysis all have to loosen to widen the exit strategy. Relaxin and estrogen are hormones that the female body makes to do so. You can imagine if a joint is now looser than it should be and there's increased pressures on it, it's probably going to cause pain. And I can be full a testament that I had severe SI joint during pregnancy. In fact, during my last pregnancy, I almost couldn't even step on the drill pedal to perform operations. Putting all my weight on one leg was almost unbearable towards the end of my pregnancy. And I'm sure you've heard of sciatica, right? The sciatic nerve passes anterior to the SI joint and can become inflamed if the SI joint is inflamed. That's why you can get pain that radiates down your leg. Now the good news is that most SI joint pain improves after delivery. However, the bad news is that up to 10% of women can have persistent SI joint pain after pregnancy. So what do we do? Let's talk about the basics of the anatomy of the SI joint and how we diagnose this problem and then I'll get into the treatment. The SI joint is the largest synovial joint in our body and is about the size of our palm. That's a pretty big joint. It's one of the most common sources of lower back pain, pregnant or not. Inflammation of the SI joint can happen in autoimmune conditions and can cause something called sacroiliitis. Arthritic conditions of the SI joint can exist as well as trauma to the SI joint can cause this type of pain. Car accidents and falls are a very common reason to have SI joint pain. To diagnose it, we take a thorough history as well as physical examinations, imaging studies, and sometimes even diagnostic injections to help make the diagnosis. Unfortunately, because it's not part of the lumbar spine, lumbar spine imaging is normal. So I often find that patients that have SI joint pain are sometimes blown off by other doctors that are looking at the lumbar spine. For whatever reason, a lot of people don't recognize SI joint pain as a problem or cause of lower back pain including spine surgeons. The hallmark symptoms of SI joint pain is pain in that lower back over the PSIS region. It's usually on one side, but it can be on both sides if both SI joints hurt. Pain into the hip, buttocks, or groin are extremely common. Sciatic pain or pain that radiates down the leg as well as stiffness in the lower back are also very common complaints. Now the symptoms I said earlier are extremely common. If you bear weight on that leg, like running, jogging, going up and down stairs, 
or even getting in and out of a car can be extremely painful. Believe it or not, instability is really common, like feeling like your leg's just gonna give out on you. Risk factors are gait disorders like scoliosis or being born with one leg shorter than the other. Pregnancy or childbirth is another very common risk factor. Prior lower back surgery because it puts extra stress on that joint. And I see a lot of that. Repeated activities that put increased stress on the joint, like people that have a very labor intensive job. From a physical examination standpoint, these are the most common maneuvers that we can perform that will increase the pain in patients with SI joint pain. Including these types of testing in your physical examination is extremely important. Imaging is usually helpful, but usually just to exclude the diagnosis. So if you have someone complaining of pain and their lower back MRI is normal, they've got to be having pain coming from somewhere. Imaging of the SI joint itself often doesn't help us very much because it's sometimes normal. Often it's a clinical diagnosis and for a lot of clinicians, that can be challenging for whatever reason. So let's talk about treatment, the most important part of this video. Let's start with the basics. Heat or ice can help as well as over-the-counter anti-inflammatory medications. Manual manipulation by a qualified healthcare provider can be highly effective in some patients, especially those that have hypermobility. Highly qualified healthcare professional can be a chiropractor, an osteopathic medicine doctor, or even a physical therapist. Bracing or taping can also be very effective. Physical therapy is the mainstay of treatment for SI joint pain. It's extremely important to go to a therapist that knows how to rehabilitate the SI joint. For postpartum women, I encourage you to seek a pelvic floor specialist. Our pelvic floor has so many muscles that help stabilize our SI joint and our lower back. As you can imagine during pregnancy and delivery, these muscles are stretched. Physical therapy is vital to treating all aspects of pelvic floor dysfunction. Not only does it help treat lower back pain, but it can treat other pelvic floor related issues like urinary incontinence, bowel issues, pelvic pain, and sexual function, just to name a few. A holistic approach to SI joint pain is extremely crucial. To be honest, most patients improve with all of the things that I just mentioned. Now, what if they don't? If they performed all of these conservative treatments that I have just discussed, injections may be the next step to help conclude that diagnosis. SI injections can provide temporary relief to the pain in there and also can help us confirm that diagnosis. Other options along that same token are things like radiofrequency ablations and even stem cell treatment. Well, doc, I've done all of that and my back still hurts. Permanent fusion of the SI joint can be offered by minimally invasive techniques. I am a surgeon that actively treats patients with SI joint pain and perform this procedure many times a month. So back to our patient. She's had this pain for a really long time, so she's definitely gonna need surgery, right? Actually, no, I referred her to a physical therapist and after three months of intense physical therapy, her pain was much improved. She learned things that she could do at home to improve that pain tremendously. And she's more importantly, back to being a mom. Mom without pain. I'm gonna step on my soapbox for just a second. My word of advice, if you are not getting the answers for your pain by your doctors, get another opinion. Make sure that doctor really believes that SI joint pain exists. Unfortunately, in medicine, this is a gray area that some doctors do not recognize. Finally, she saw someone that did, and she's much better. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week. I'll go through another case, and I hope all the moms out there had a wonderful Mother's Day.